Okay, so sorry everyone and hello again. Thank you for participating uh, in this webinar offered by the European School Education Platform, uh, the European Commission's platform that brings together all the stakeholders of the educational sector. So uh, today you will get uh, an insight on the project SKATE, uh, which is a project about uh, the use of technology in inclusive early childhood education. And uh, I would like to introduce you uh, our speakers. So. Uh, Dr. Xanthi Aristidou, or Xanthia. Uh, she's a senior project manager at the CARTED and a research associate at the European University of Cyprus. Uh, her research interests include many educational fields, uh, such as uh, multicultural education, inclusive education, and early childhood education. And uh, our second speaker uh, is uh, Dr. Katerina Mavru. Uh, she's an associate professor also at the European University of Cyprus. Uh, her research interests uh, focus on the different fields of education with a focus on the use of, te uh, of assistive technology for inclusive education. Um, also, before I give the floor to our speakers, I would like to remind you that you can use the chat to post any questions or thoughts. And moreover, at the end of the webinar, uh, we will share with you a five minute feedback survey. Your opinion and your comments uh, are always welcomed and much appreciated. So please uh, take some time after the webinar to fill in the survey. So, Axanthia, uh, the floor is yours now. Hi, Maria Elena. Hi to everyone. Thank you so much for participating in this webinar. Give me a second to share my presentation. Can you see the presentation? See. Yes, Xanthia, it's um, yes, yes, okay. we can see okay. it perfectly. Okay. So, hello everyone. Um, my name is Xanthia Aristido, and as, as also Maria Elena mentioned at the beginning, I'm a research fellow and currently working at the project SKATE, which is an Erasmus Plus program at the European University of Cyprus. In this presentation, colleague Katerina Mavro, we will talk about the ways of empowering early childhood education teachers for inclusive tech-driven education. It is also important to highlight here that the work presented in this webinar is the outcome of a collaboration between all the partners involved in the project SCAPE. Yes. So, um, in today's uh, seminar, um, we will um, mention, we will provide a, a brief description of two parts. Part one, we will provide the background and rationale, providing also an introduction to the SCAPE project and looking at project aims and activities. In this part, we will also discuss the importance of using information and communications technologies and assistive technology in early childhood education and care, while explaining first what is ICTAT in brief and why teachers need to be trained on how to incorporate ICTAT in their teaching practices. In part two, with practical implications, looking at inclusive pedagogies and approaches, as well as how teachers can design their lessons with the use of ICT AT. So let's start first with the introduction to the project. First, we need to clarify what is SCATE, what does SCATE means. SCATE stands for Skills and Knowledge on Assistive Technology in Early Childhood Inclusive Education. The project is co-funded by the Erasmus Plus European Union. Our aims in the project are to foster new skills and knowledge of teachers and educators for the appropriate use of technology and digital solutions, to increase the quality of early childhood education and care by promoting an early intervention with appropriate assistive technology for children with special needs or at risk of exclusion, as well as to create an increasingly inclusive learning environment. 
participation of the project, there is a collaboration between academic and professional institutions. And specifically, this includes the Thomas More University, who, which is the project co coordinator, um, um, the European University of Cyprus, the EAS uh, Bologna on last in Italy, Dominique Savio in Belgium, and Open the Windows in the Republic of North uh, Macedonia. The SCAPE project has three main outputs, which we will very briefly discuss here. In output one, our aim was to map and assess innovative approaches on inclusive technology for ECEC. In order to do so, we have conducted a literature review and analysis about technology-supported learning in early childhood education. The review and analysis of literature specifically concern issues of inclusive education in early childhood, all of educator practices in using technology in order to define the best strategies, barriers, factors for success and failure through case studies and other research evidence. This also included teachers and parents interviews aiming to identify the current situation of technology deployment strategies in ECEC, such as mapping the practices, opportunities, barriers and needs. Also, we analyzed in depth a number of reported in early childhood education in all partner countries. For the second output, we focused in developing guidelines for inclusive classrooms for ECEC teachers. The, draft, the guidelines were drafted by a means of a Delphi procedure involving project partners as well as representative stakeholders and teachers. Uh, for, some, for those who, who may not know, the Delphi method is a robust approach for structuring a group communication process so that the process is effective in allowing a group of individuals as a whole to build consensus over a topic. Through the we made an overview on the role of technology in universally designed learning programs, types of technologies, as well as implementation of technologies. We also identified the main pillars of content and knowledge. Um, we developed guidelines with indications for the low role of assistive technology in specifically empowering children with communication, motor, sensorial or intellectual disabilities. In output three, a toolkit was developed, including a competency framework, learning programs and assessment technologies. The competency framework provides core competencies for teachers, educators necessary for successfully working with technology in inclusive early childhood education. This allowed the elaboration of learning outcomes in different areas of knowledge, skills and attitudes and define the learning programs, enabling the development of the core curricula and materials. The learning programs, on the one hand, responded to the needs of ex expressed by the teachers and educators involved um, in the projects, as well as served as examples of the applications of the competency framework to guide the professional development. After the development of the learning programs for teachers and educators within the partner countries, they were also localized, localized and validated through piloting in all partner uh, countries. Belgium, Cyprus, Italy and North Macedonia. One of the deliverables of the project that we will provide a brief uh, presentations in this uh, webinar was the preparation of the guidelines. The SCATE guidelines on inclusive classrooms for early childhood education and care uh, teachers aimed, aims to provide the main theoretical aspects of the content and the focus of the learning programs developed in the SCATE projects. The guidelines provide an overview of the following components for the appropriate use of digital technologies in inclusive educational settings for young learners, such as an overview of the main concepts of disability, digital technology and inclusive education, 
an overview of the basic theoretical principles for creativity and learning in in the notion of inclusive easy easy an overview on the role of technology in universally designed learning programs as well as how the use of high and low tech technology can empower children with special individual needs or emerging special needs where the educational activities cannot be made fully and permanently inclusive um, we also provide an overview of the implementation on the implementation of technologies through the use of mainstream tools such as tablets, as well as emerging uh, such as robotics, kinematics, safety wearable devices, simulated environments, smart toys, as well as high tech technologies as low tech uh, technology strategies, which are all as educational technology in their broader uh, sense, sense, aiming to foster the development of cognitive intellectual communication and social competencies. We also provide an overview and indications for the role of low and high tech assistive technology in specifically empowering children with communication, motor, sensorial or intellectual disabilities. These guidelines have been drafted, validated and consolidated with the involvement of all partners and through the involvement of local ECC services and stakeholders. Following uh, this process, as well as the Delphi method that we described earlier, the consortium team identified the main areas of interest to be elaborated in the guidelines document as well as the main issues to be highlighted as additional materials, resources and tips. In these slides, we provide an outline of the main components of the SCAPE guidelines, whereas the full version of the guidelines can be downloaded from our website. So therefore, in section one, focus on inclusive education. We provide the basics of inclusive education, which are as analyzed in, in subsections, such as the, we explain what is inclusive education, we provide some definitions, constructions, and main models of disability. We explain uh, what is inclusive education and what is not, as well as we um, provide a description on how on what is inclusive education in early childhood educational settings. In this section, we also uh, provide some examples, practices of applying inclusive pedagogies in classroom by first explaining what is inclusive pedagogy, as well as providing a description and a focus uh, on the universal design for learning and differentiation. And finally, this section ends with mapping some challenges and opportunities in inclusive education by drawing on research evidence on practices and attitudes. In the second uh, section or thematic area, we focus on early childhood education. We describe first what is an early childhood education by providing definitions and explaining the setting, as well as uh, we provide some guidelines and the, the curricula uh, for ECEC. We also explain the basic pedagogical principles for of ECEC by, for example, focusing on creativity and play, Uh, theories and approaches to children's social relations in education, as well as provide some practical strategies and approaches on specifically creativity and play. In the third thematic area, we focused on technology, which uh, focused both on mainstream and digital assistive technology and its use to early childhood education which is uh, explained in, in, in subsections, such as using early learners, with main reference to the use of mainstream learning technologies and their benefits in early childhood education, um, such as looking at technology and has learning benefits, types and technology as supporting creativity, creative thinking and play. 
we also focus on using ICTAT with early learnings with specific reference to the use of assistive technologies and their benefits in early years of education. So in this section, we focus specifically use of assistive technology. In the fourth and the final thematic area, we try to bring the previous thematic areas together and um, um, provide uh, and describe how we can create digital inclusive education in early education settings. So um, first we map the main goals of digital inclusive uh, um, education in early education, which define the main objectives of digital inclusive education in early years. We focus specifically on universal design for learning in practice, where UDL is connected with the use of ICT and AT. We also explain uh, how we can use UDL meaning universal design for learning and mainstream technology, and how universal design for learning can be used in the process of learning as well as um, use of ICT and AT. In this section, uh, we also have um, a subsection on collaboration with involved stakeholders, uh, noting the importance of teamwork as well as collaboration between various stakeholders, uh, highlighting some methods of bringing together uh, stakeholders, such as communities of practice, as well as ways of supporting professional learning through self-reflection practices and strategies for educators. In addition to the main themes that compose the core uh, SCADE guidelines, as outlined uh, previously, the, um, the participants who, um, uh, of the study uh, who designed the SCADE guidelines also identified issues that they considered important for the development of a coherent training for educators in technology-enhanced inclusive education in ECEC. These additional issues were connected to the main themes of the guidelines and have been included in the annexes sections of the deliverable as set of tips, checkpoints and further information. Each annex is cited in the main text of the guidelines and the, it's linked to the content of both the guidelines as well as the learning programs that were developed based of both the guidelines and the competency framework. So, uh, in this section, we provide various tips, practical strategies and resources that a teacher can easily use and um, uh, for their teacher, for his or her teaching. Overall, um, the SCADE guidelines were developed through the means of a Delphi method by having consultation and mutual agreement among participants for the finalization of the main themes, which were elaborated in the guidelines. Um, met met uh, Delphi method participants, teachers, as well as external stakeholders were involved in other phases of the design, the delivery and evaluation of the learning programs. feedback from stakeholders in order to develop the guidelines document and the, the guidelines document consists the basis for the conduct development of the SCADE learning program. Um, the SCADE and, and guidelines uh, document is still in process and it will be finalized by having additional examples of scenarios by educators who participated in the validation of the learning programs. Uh, the guidelines con uh, document, as um, mentioned previously, is open to the public for additional feedback and reflection. And the final evaluation of the pilots is also expected to provide feedback not only from educators, but also from trainers, learners and parents. So a big um, activity of the SCADE program. The project was the, uh, the development of the guidelines. Uh, another activity of the SCADE project was the development of the competency framework. Its scope uh, is to provide a comprehensive overview of skills and competencies related to different areas 
of professional development necessary to successfully design, develop, implement, and assess inclusive educational activities by means of digital technologies. In order to develop in order to develop this activity, um, we consulted and adapted existing frameworks, such as the Index for Inclusion, Universal Design for Learning, the Antelis Plus Competences Framework, as well as the KPT Guidelines for Lifelong Learning in Assistive Technology. Um, the competency framework and following the focus of uh, the project in inclusive uh, early childhood education and care uh, using IC focus is therefore on the below components, um, including uh, inclusive education and inclusive pedagogies, such as differentiation and universal design for learning, digital assistive technology competences and digital inclusion, as well as inclusive early childhood education and care. Um, so here we will provide a very brief overview of the main areas of uh, competencies. This area uh, taking into consideration the pedagogical aspect of the educator's uh, professional development, the digital competencies aspects, as well as the leadership aspect of the educators. Therefore, the first uh, competence focuses on the design of curriculum and learning uh, process, looking at competences for learning design, such as assessment of needs and barriers, setting objectives, learning act ones, how to plan, design um, activities appropriate for ECEs. You can see that in the presentation. Um, the second area focus on the implementation of teaching and learning strategies, and this includes uh, competences on how to implement inclusive pedagogies by integrating ICTAT in the learning process, as well as um, implementing UDL guidelines. The, the third area focus on resources how um, looking at the uh, knowledge that a teacher educator may have on ICTA. So a teacher educator may select, modify, create and use of basic resources and educators own digital competencies. And the last area focused on classroom management and collaboration collaborations, looking at the and parents and learners involvement, collaborative teaching and the possibilities for, um, for having a collaboration uh, with, in a broader sense and bringing some more practical management issues such as ways of setting up equipment. This levels of competences were developed across three levels of, of proficiency, where a teacher educator may select at which uh, level uh, he, may, he or she may be currently is. So therefore we have the beginner level, which is uh, the beginner level, the intermediate and the advanced level. So here we'll provide an example of the first step. And we have the same statements, similar statements, uh, highlighting specific issues, and these are modified across uh, the three different levels. For example, in the, um, if I can read the first statement, at the beginner level, a teacher may consider that uh, they can, teachers may consider that they can identify the importance of participation for all, which this is classified as a beginner level. Um, at the, level, the same, the same sentence statement is modified on on uh, teachers being able to seek and remove barriers to learning and participation in all aspects of the curriculum and lesson design, and that the advanced level. Um, teachers may be able to identify individual children's skills and needs and compare them with the actual learning objectives. This also is available in our website, so any one of you can be able to uh, download it and have a look. 
And overall, the SCADE competency framework um, was used to assist the SCADE team and involve stakeholders in the design and development of the learning programs for the training of educators. During and after the implementation of the pilots, teachers, participants mapped their practices as examples and scenarios. Framework, which will also be added to the final version. And the SCATE learning program, based on the guidelines and the competency framework, and we developed the SCATE learning uh, program and focused on the four modules for the learning program by incorporating various teaching methods, case studies, and examples proposed by the participants. So the learning program was try to draw uh, examples, references, teaching methods and theory from the SCADE guidelines and the competency framework to train teachers on how uh, to create digital inclusive um, um, in early childhood education settings. So therefore, um, one module focused on inclusive education and early childhood education. The second module focused on technology, on enabling to teachers um, on how to use ICT with early learners. The third module focused on technology, on using ICT and AT with early learners as well as the, th the final for a um, uh, module focused on assisting on training teachers on how to create digital inclusive education in early childhood education settings. After developing these four modules by all uh, partner countries, these were localized and adapted in each partner country. I will give the floor to my colleague. Uh, Katrina Mavru and uh, Katrina, you may start and let me know when you wish to start the video. Change the slides. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Xantia, for an excellent uh, introduction to the, pro uh, to the project. Uh, just to say hello to everyone and, and say how happy I am to see so many people um, uh, uh, connected and also to see people from countries that have been benefited specifically from, from this guide. Not only the four partner countries, but uh, before I proceed to some practical examples and uh, and some connections with inclusive education and assistive technology, just to say that this this uh, uh, project has been the um, the basis on which a very recent uh, project of UNICEF has been developed, a development of a guide for um, the use of assistive technology in inclusive education for teachers and school teams for countries that I see specifically here and greetings from colleagues from, from countries of uh, Eastern Europe, uh, countries like uh, Bonzi Herzegovina, Armenia, um, also North Macedonia, uh, and of course all, all countries, uh, but uh, the guide was very much focused on, on Eastern Europe and uh, countries that are still represented here. So it's, it's so great. Uh, to to make this connection uh, and parts of what you've seen today will be included and are included uh, actually in that uh, guide that will be very soon published by UNICEF in 2023, probably before the beginning of the summer. So keep an eye on it. Um, so uh, on this uh, second part, I'll try to make a connection with, uh, uh, first of all, just just um, uh, uh, raise our concerns on why do we need uh, ICT, information communication technology and assistive technology in early childhood education, and why this specific uh, emphasis on the assistive technology aspect uh, particularly. So if we just have a very short introduction with this uh, video, Xantia, please. Yes. Are you going to teach me in a school? Are you going to make this in a Is this what you're going to use to teach me this? Is this what you're going to use to teach me this? Do you know how to use a computer? Do you know how to use a computer? Are you a teacher? Are you my teacher? Are you going to teach me using the internet? 
Are you going to teach me how to be safe on the internet? Do you know what goes on on the internet? Are you sure you're my teacher? Are you sure you're my teacher? Are you going to learn how to use the technology? I'm a digital native. Do computers scare you? Are you afraid to use them? Have you been on Facebook? Have you been on Twitter? Have you been surfing? Do you even know what's on the internet? Are you going to be my teacher? Or just that test book? Because I want to know what the world has to offer. And if you're not on the internet and know nothing about computers, you can't be my teacher. I said you can't be my teacher. Make room for somebody who knows how to use the internet. You think I'm going to be ready? Do you think you're preparing me for the world that I have to live in? Think I'm going to be ready? That's your job! That's your job! I think I wouldn't be able to explain that better than, than the kid himself. So, and it's not just about the internet. So this is the idea of this project, how to empower teachers to be able to teach these children that consider themselves digital natives and not only. So we are now, uh, nowadays in, a, um, in uh, the digital era, not only the internet era, uh, and also we are nowadays in uh, um, the period that everybody talks about inclusiveness, about equal opportunities. So what does it bring together what we call digital education and digital inclusive education? It's a, or inclusive education. It's a paradigm shift. It's a paradigm shift where we have to take into consideration design. On one hand, le designing learning center um, uh, situations, learning center uh, uh, environments, uh, based on learning communities. On the other hand, if we want to have inclusive education, is designing universal design for learning. So it's a it's a matter of learning design. The use of technology. On one hand, we're talking about digital education, so we're talking about the potential of technology and the internet and other digital technologies that provide to education. And at the same time, we're talking about technology that provides accessibility and digital inclusion. So it's education for all in the digital era. So the technology is the second aspect. And of course, participation. To be digitally included, we need participation and engagement in the learning process and for children with disabilities or other vulnerable groups, the importance and um, children that face um, uh, challenges, the importance is to use technology to provide the differentiation, equal opportunities for participation and engagement. So participation is the third aspect of our design learning processes, digitally inclusive. Can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So when we're talking about um, uh, ICT and AT, what do we actually mean? Uh, here, the main uh, the main concepts refer to accessible technologies, which is uh, the technology that is uh, that includes embedded accessibility. So the smartphones we have, our computers, our laptops, they all have embedded accessibility that benefit also learners with disabilities. The magnifiers, the voiceover on our on our smartphones. Uh, the narrator on our uh, Windows computer provide uh, what we call accessible technologies. In addition, we talk about assistive technologies. We talk about technologies that are designed specifically to address the needs of uh, persons with disabilities. So these are technologies that may not be embedded in the mainstream technology, in the general technology, but acquired separately, but be compatible with assistive technologies. So it's communication devices for learners that do not have verbal communication, switch users that cannot use it, that are, uh, have limitations in using the conventional uh, keyboards or, or um, mice, alternative mice, alternative keyboards, and so on. 
And of course, to make accessible and assistive technology useful for participation, we need accessible digital content. So the content that is accessed by uh, persons with disabilities, by learners with disabilities in our situation, needs to be accessible in order to have a meaning for using, to have a, sex, a sense for using our um, assistive or accessible technologies. Next slide, please. Thank you, Xanthia. So, uh, why why the, the why so much emphasis on the role of the teacher? Because the teacher is in the center of the provision of technology and also the use of technology. In this slide, uh, is a, a specific framework we're not going to focus on the framework is used that is uh, often implemented for the assessment of children with disabilities, of learners with disabilities, for um, obtaining uh, their individual assistive technologies. However, we consider this um, important to present here because it's actually assessing or actually uh, observing what we need to have in mind when designing for learners, for all learners. The students, so what is what are the uh, what is the background, what's the learning profile, what are the specific competences of the student, the learning environment, so anything around the student that uh, needs to be considered when using technology in learning, the tasks, what are the students expected to do, and of course the tools that the students are going to use. The teacher's uh, role in this process is very important because the teacher is a source of information in identifying as, as our uh, competency framework that, um, that uh, Xanthia presented uh, highlights that as teachers, we need to identify the barriers. We need to identify the, requ the accessibility requirements of the learners. We need to identify the participation requirements. So the teacher is a source of information in the process of identifying those needs and identifying the barriers. Also, the teacher is the person that is going to plan the lesson, apply and evaluate the learning process. And at the same time, it's a collaborator in deciding the learning activities, the learning tools, the learning materials. So not that everything is expected from the teacher, but it has, uh, the teachers have a main role, a core role in um, the whole process. Sanchia, thank you. So what do we do in the SCAPE project and not only? for uh, empowering teachers to um, actually implement uh, the use of ICT and AT in education. First of all, we identified, as identified in the guidelines, inclusive pedagogies. What is learning for all? When we're talking about inclusive pedagogies, we're also, uh, we are uh, actually talking about the design of the curriculum, the learning activities, the classroom environment, the instructional materials, the teaching techniques and assessment procedures that would be flexible in order to include every uh, child, every child, every uh, learner in our classroom. Uh, and this, um, uh, we have to uh, observe and decide how these are available uh, on to all learners and how they are grounded comprehensively in the pedagogy. This is very much, uh, can we go to the next slide? Thank you, Oxantia. This is very much uh, relevant to the provision of options. So what is important in inclusive education and early childhood education have very common aspects, in in, especially in the provision of flexibility and options. Uh, and uh, early childhood education is a very good start for uh, experimenting with inclusive education pedagogies. And why is that? Because teachers in early childhood education, even if we don't have any um, training in inclusive education specifically, early childhood education talks about options, stations of learning, um, a breakdown of, of knowledge and learning processes into small achievable tasks, construction of learning in um, in kinds of differentiation and integrated curricula and programs that are not very much specific only on the discipline, but also on the children's interests and profiles. So this is how inclusive education, inclusive pedagogy and early childhood education come together. The main idea is a provision of choices and options. Can we go to the next slide? Thank you. So this brings us to the universal design for learning. Uh, the universal design for learning that may be familiar to uh, most of you 
it's um, uh, it focuses on the uh, idea that uh, we need to engage learners in learning. We need to provide various um, ways of representing the information and in learning, and we need to provide various uh, options for students to uh, act and express on their uh, express themselves on their own learning. I think the next slide it's more yes, it's, it's clearer. It was very small the diagram in the first the the first the previous slide actually it's a screenshot from the cast, the center that developed the uh, learning and um, the, the Universal Design for Learning, and this is why we used it. It's, uh, it's the map of the principles and the guidelines of Universal Design for Learning. Here is a more simplistic uh, presentation that will be uh, easier to uh, understand and follow. So one thing, uh, the first uh, uh, principle of Universal Design for Learning is learners' engagement. In order to engage learners into the learning process, according to the Universal Design for Learning, we need to provide options that activate learners' interest, motivation and expectations, regardless disabilities, regardless learning profiles, rega regardless uh, cultural background or other background. The third, uh, the the second principle, the second guideline of the principle of engagement talks about sustaining effort and persistence. So it's not only about uh, motivating the learners, but it's also about sustaining this effort and persist uh, during the learning process. So maintaining this interest. And the, th the third uh, guideline talks about self-regulation, providing options for learners to act on their own learning, understand how they learn and regulate the same throughout, throughout the process. The uh, second principle of universal design for learning talks about representation. This mainly refers to the way we perceive information. So a lot of learners may be visual learners, maybe um, learners that pr uh, prefer auditory information, uh, learners that prefer uh, that have a different uh, language background or are more visual in the sense of using symbols. This is, for example, very relevant for uh, children that are migrants, children that have uh, severe learning disabilities, children that use AAC devices, documented and alternative communication devices. Also, another guideline of representation talks about the way we understand, we process the information, and this about has to do with comprehension, the way that uh, information is organized and presented to the learners. So Universal Design for Learning cares about how we help learners to organize their own understanding of uh, the information provided for the knowledge of the learners provided. And the third guideline refers to the way learners act upon their own learning, the way that we participate. So how uh, physical action, so uh, for example, if all learners are about to cut something, draw something, read something, verbally express something, we need options. We need options for learners with mobility limitations, learners with uh, communication difficulties, but also children that may need or won't wish to express themselves alternatively than the conventional way that teachers um, expect. And this has to do with expression and communication, and of course with the executive functions of critical thinking, experimenting, uh, uh, and analyzing the information. So this is more or less a very, a very fast, the framework of the universal design for learning that is very relevant to the use of technology. Here's an example of how this um, leveling uh, through the universal design for learning can be applied with the, uh, Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, so if we talk about executive functions and the use we uh, and the way that learners are um, uh, acting upon their learning or uh, processing the way uh, information is represented as well as uh, getting engaged. If we get an example of storytelling, for example, um, more or less the example we have here, in the level of remembering uh, through the Bloom's taxonomy, we're talking about remember something, know something, recall or define. So providing options means ask children to match or label or name. So uh, uh, change the way uh, children act on this learning and presenting uh, or reaching the learning outcome. It's very important. And having that and doing so 
technology has an essential role. Because I'm a bit conscious of time, I will not go through uh, each level of the blue taxonomies, but uh, this is just to say that how um, this is just, give me a second, it seems that I have a, a battery issue on my computer. Okay, I hope I don't get out of or run out of battery. Uh, so, uh, and so um, if we move to the next one, uh, this is very much connected to the summer model. The SAM model, it's, uh, 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 it's a model uh, identified for the, for the integration of technology uh, in general, not only assistive technology. And it so shows how we uh, integrate technology in various levels. So integrating technology just to substitute the conventional. So we have a projector instead of a whiteboard or to augment, so we have an interactive whiteboard, uh, so it gives some functional improvement, but modif modification means we have an interactive whiteboard, but with online um, uh, connection that gives uh, access to, to students that probably are not in the classroom, if we bring back the memories of the COVID pandemic. And redefinition in that interactive whiteboard with online gives also interaction to students that are away and participation, uh, equal participation. So this is the redefinition and transformation of learning. And if we put this together with uh, the universal design for learning, we see that the two first levels are, are aligned with the representation and action of, of an expression where the engagement level goes into the redefinition and modification of the learning environment. Uh, can you please go to the next one, uh, Xantia? So in terms now of assistive technology, um, Chris Abbott uh, in uh, 2007 uh, tried to um, present the taxonomy of assistive technology. So if we think that we're using assistive technology just for training, which is sometimes interesting and important. So training, it, it, it's through a more medical approach to disability. Uh, so the, the, um, the idea that we train children in using specific assistive technology for uh, substituting one of the skills that we think impairment takes away. So someone cannot see, we use technology to uh, augment, um, um, to have magnification or have a voice recognition, and we have this uh, kind of accessibility. If we move forward to assist learning, if we use this kind of technology to also um, uh, include the child in a classroom and be able to have access to the visual information, we assist learning a step further. And in enabling learning, if this technology is used to transform the learning experience and provide opportunities for collaboration, for uh, access online, for getting engaged into the learning process. So if we match Abbott's taxonomy with the two frameworks that were presented earlier, can we go to the next slide, please? We have this uh, representation. So. Modification and redefinition means engagement, and engagement means actually enabling learning. And this is the optimal we need to uh, reach as educators uh, with the use of assistive and IC assistive technology and ICT in uh, education. Next slide. Thank you. So, what about the learning design? Uh, in the learning design, we need to. Uh, we are all educators, I guess, here, or have an education background or some knowledge. So identifying the barriers and opportunities for the participation in the classroom is one of the main first steps. Identifying the barriers for accessing technology in the classroom and assessing existing needs uh, is the next step. So uh, to help us identify the resources we want to do, resources in terms of human, resources in terms of artifacts, the technology per se. This is the first step in planning. And then if we want to put this into lesson planning using the principles of universal design for learning, then uh, we we a good. This is a table. It's not um, 
it's not the only solution, but it's a table that helps educators and has been used in the Cascade project as, as well as in the UNICEF guide to uh, guide uh, educators on how we can think our um, lesson planning. So taking one by one the, learn, the, the uh, universal design for learning uh, principles, we then think of which are the learning activities we can use and how this can be designed. So for engagement, for example, we need to use meaningful activities that are linked to current issues or to our learners' interests. We use the relevant digital competences that uh, students have. So we don't present, uh, we, we avoid presenting a technology that is totally unknown. If it's a new technology that we want to uh, introduce, it's important to link that with the learner's existing knowledge, digital competences, as well as our own existing learn um, uh, digital competences. And then we choose the tools and technology. And uh, something else that is missing in this table is the added value. Uh, a, th a fourth thing we need to think we need to consider is what is the added value of the tools that we are using in terms of um, reflecting and responding to the principles of universal design for learning and how are these integrated in the learning activities. Uh, for example, in the provide options for representation, we are thinking of physical accessibility. We talk about uh, children with uh, mobility, uh, mobility um, uh, limitations or children with uh, um, no verbal communication. What are the alternative means that we're using to present uh, our information, the knowledge, uh, and what are the tools we are going to use? So I won't continue. As I said, I'm conscious of time, but this is the main idea. Uh, and as a final step, what we need to consider, actually this is a step before implementing, before designing the lesson, but it's, it's, it comes to the last uh, uh, part of our guidelines as presented by, um, uh, give me a second, apologies, I will need to turn on the power. Please accept my apologies. There was something going wrong with my computer cable. It all said, thank you. Um, so the um, the final step is, oh my God, it's going to get me off. Really, really accept my apologies. Oh. My power is off and uh, it shows. OK, hope now it's OK. Ah, sorry. OK, so this is the final step of the implementation. Uh, and uh, you can still hear me, right? OK, apologies again. Uh, the implementation plan, we need to set a time, time schedule for this. We also need to define the setting so we know which kind of environment we're using. We need to set the objectives to be clearly set and decide on the activities. Uh, and identify the persons involved. The most important part of identifying the persons involved is because we're not working alone in the classroom. So what is important is to uh, um, identify which are the other stakeholders. That means uh, who are the other stakeholders? The parents, uh, so skate places and uh, uh, places more emphasis on the involvement of parents and the collaboration with teachers. Also, um, what are the training needs? Who needs to get trained? So it's, is it the teacher? Is it the school assistant? Uh, is it all of them, the parents as well? What competences uh, that do the children need to develop uh, for using ICT and also assistive their own assistive technology? So an implementation plan will help the school team, and this is very much linked to the second uh, to the final part of the guidelines, uh, to um, 
start, uh, Santia, can you please go back to the previous one? Yes. Uh, uh, so um, we involve uh, the whole school approach, the collaborations that are identified into the uh, final uh, part of the guidelines and the competency framework, uh, and work in a whole school approach. And this is why the competency framework was also part of it was also um, uh, based on the index of inclusion, because index of inclusion uh, emphasizes very much in the whole school approach of inclusive education. Now we can go to the next one. Uh, this is just a screenshot of uh, an activity building template that is provided in the SKATE uh, project. Of course, teachers can use their own activity building. Schools have their own uh, schools and educational system, have, uh, have their own uh, templates for lesson planning and activity, activity building. Uh, but this is what was provided by SKATE. So uh, after we have the implementation plan for the school, whole school approach, after we have the lesson plan for the uh, planning of uh, uh, objectives and activities, then we have specific templates for designing each activity in the lesson plan. And at the end of the template, we have a section of reflection. So it's a good um, a, a, a suggestion of the SKATE team is that for each activity, teachers need to reflect on how this worked, how technology was integrated, what needs to be improved for the next implementation of a similar activity or a built on activity. And uh, this is another uh, template that is used in, is in one of the annexes of the guidelines. Uh, that is what was presented actually uh, in the examples of the tables uh, uh, earlier. So for each learning objective, if we want to break the tasks even further for each learning objective of each activity, we can also break down our approach to the universal design of learning uh, act, um, principles and to the technology we use. Of course, the technology doesn't need to be different. I mean, for engagement, it shouldn't be a different activity uh, technology of, for representation or action expression. It can be different, it can be the same. Uh, the important thing is to be able to make the link of how the technology we use uh, responds to what we need to implement in terms of the universal design for learning uh, guidelines and what is the approach we um, employ for integrating that technology into the learning process in order to respond to our learning objectives and, lean, and, and reach our learning outcomes. Here is an example of an activity that is built with an, uh, an accessible uh, software. So we can see the example is in Greek, it was taken from a Greek school. Uh, and we have Greek colleagues here, though, so that may make sense. But this is how an activity was built in order to provide visual uh, representation, both images and videos, the videos of the kid in, uh, it's a video, and then images. Also, children had the opportunity to listen to the story, read and uh, change pages with the use of a switch, so it was also accessible for children with physical limitations that uh, cannot use a touch screen or uh, the, uh, the conventional mouse, and uh, they needed clicking for changing uh, their pages or selecting uh, and interact with the screen. So here we can reflect on how this software provides the opportunity to um, uh, provide different means of representation, different means of action and expression, so uh, using the switch, and also engagement of the learners. And this is just a screenshot of, um, a, a, of the whole uh, text of the textbook of, of, I think it's third graders in uh, primary education, this one. Uh, and that's all. This is our contact details. I know I'm a bit uh, for I had we have 45 minutes we used an hour uh, but uh, just to say that this QR code and we can also copy and paste the link into the chat uh, it's uh, if you have time to go through the 
uh, documents of the SKATE project, we would appreciate your feedback. And uh, if you go through this questionnaire, at the end of it, you can access the full learning module, the four learning modules of the SKATE project with all the materials. Uh, so please, we would like to have your feedback. I know that this was a very short presentation, but feel free to provide some feedback and also access the material. Thank you very much. Uh, and apologies was... again for my <laughs> technology issues. Whenever I have a presentation on technology, I have a technology concern. Uh, it happens. It happens during <laughs> live sessions all the time. So it was a very insightful presentation, I have to admit. And thank you very much. Uh, thank you everyone for participating. Uh, we have uh, already shared with you in the chat uh, the survey. Uh, we would like you to fill in and also the link to the skate project. Katerina has uh, shared it with you earlier. Uh, thank you very much for participating and thank you very much, uh, Xanthi and Katerina, again for accepting our invitation. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It was our pleasure. So I hope to see you everyone um, in our future webinars. Uh, thank you again and have a nice evening. Thank you you too. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.